We knew CJ would ball when he got to the league, but I mean, damn, we didn't think he'd be this good. Lighting up the league with one of the highest quality rookie seasons you'll ever see, CJ Stroud has already made the case to be seen in the upper echelon of signal callers. Leading the league in yards per game, Stroud was a gunslinger in every sense of the word, tossing touchdowns and attacking aggressively, even against some of the league's best defenses. How successful a quarterback is ultimately comes down to their processing. The ability to read, scan, and anticipate is the primary skill needed to beat ever complex coverages. And in all three departments we look for, CJ excels. Let's start with the progressions, where Stroud's fast eyes flicker through opportunities to find the potential weakness. Facing a quarter's defense here against the Jets, he's gonna scan the full field to find the open man. Noah Brown comes in motion here to try and gain intel and throw off the Jets' counts, but the right side is quickly shut down with the safety clamping the number two receiver when he goes vertical, and the backer is taking the under route, allowing Sauce to drop and protect any corner route. So Stroud works backside, where the safety again has a number two receiver, and the backer drifts inside with Xavier Hutchinson going vertical. However, this is false, with Hutch cutting 90 into the open space, and CJ's quick scanning finds the open man. In his first playoff start, CJ maneuvers his eyes and feet nicely to find his fourth option. The Browns are in single high, and when Stroud looks to his slant-flat combo, he sees a backer fly out to take the back indicating man, and conveniently blocks the passing window to the slant, forcing him backside. When he gets his eyes to his number two going vertical, he realizes this isn't man, but in fact zone, and that the seam ball is shut closed so works to his fourth option on the out and up, spotting that the flat hasn't tagged to cover it, so shifts right to find a platform to throw, dropping a beauty down the boundary to John Mechie. When the field squeezed, Stroud continued to operate with efficiency, finishing drives with intent. He's got his eyes on the leak option first off the play action, but seeing this blanketed, works back to Nico Collins, who absolutely cooks his man, leaving an easy ball for his QB. And he never wavered under pressure either. Nico exit motions showing man, so Stroud looks to his route runner Mechie, and this reveals that it's actually a cover one Robert, and CJ is going to get ultra aggressive. With the post and a sluggo backside, the middle field safety is going to take the post, leaving a shot down the boundary. As he prepares to launch, JOK blitzes late with his man assignment blocking, and has a clean shot at Stroud's ribs, but CJ stands tall and the aggressiveness pays off, as Nico tracks it beautifully for the big chunk on third. These reads and aggression were commonplace too, with Stroud willing to take the yards available underneath and ready to attack long when a shot became available. With Tennessee bringing eight into the box to combat the Texans' 12 personnel, Stroud knows his boundary out to Nico is open if the shell reveals itself to be any sort of three-deep coverage. It's exactly what he's expecting, and he's taking the cheap yards for the easy first. Against the Jags, they're gonna make the look a whole lot harder, but the result is just as easy a pass. The Jags again have the same 4 under 3 deep idea, getting to it by sending a backer and dropping a Luakun from the edge. However, with Rayshon Jenkins over the top of the speedsters, almost shading to a middle quarter, this seems an easy target, and Stroud's laying one out into space to exploit every available yard. And on a long third down, the Ravens are going to sit way back at the snap, revealing little but a four-man rush. It's another 4 under 3 deep coverage just played at the sticks with Marcus Williams poaching any deep crosser, and Brandon Stevens playing solo lock on the single receiver. Identifying the one-on-one -on -one matchup, Stroud gets aggressive, timing a beauty to his main man to move the long chains. To ascend to the next level of signal caller, quarterback must be able to anticipate a throw. Luckily for Stroud, it was all over his college tape, and that's what made us so sure of him. If you want to check out that breakdown, it had to be moved to Patreon due to some salty-ass coaches. But trust me, these anticipation throws have translated perfectly to the pros. Hitting a deep boundary out requires anticipation and placement, and Stroud's got it all on this hit to Nico Collins. He's winding up at the cut, dropping this inch perfect to where only his man can play it, and Collins completes it with a nice toe drag. This one comes back after review as only one foot gets down, but it makes the throw no less brilliant. The Broncos are playing a quarter-quarter half defense to try to negate the Texans' condensed empty set on third and long, but Stroud finds a ridiculous ball to attempt. CJ attacks the narrowest of windows, throwing cross hash to attack the space on the near side boundary. 
The corner is playing at the top of the numbers and not expecting this ball to ever be attempted. And it's thrown perfectly at the cut. But Noah Brown is out by a shoe size. It wasn't just to the boundary though. Stroud showed elite level early throws to attack the middle of the field. CJ gets a good read on the Jets cover three off the play action and throws early to attack the intermediate depth. He's releasing before Collins has even made his cut, dotting this right into the heart of the defense with beautiful touch. And he can do it while getting lit up too. The Colts send the blitz and play a 3-3 on the back end, but this once again leaves the middle of the field open for Stroud and Collins to attack. He can see the rush coming clean, but he ain't gonna back down, releasing before the cut and taking the crunch, leaving him crippled, but with the pass complete. So the mental side of the game is all there. And that's why he's destined for a long career. But combining that capacity with arm talent is what makes him truly special. With a blaster cannon for an arm like Mega Man, he can fire the ball to any spot on the field and is ultra aggressive when attacking deep. Off the play action here, Stroud notices nobody is protecting the middle of the field from Collins' skinny post. So hitches up into the created pocket and looks to launch. There's pressure coming, but we know he doesn't care about that flicking this 50 yards to the perfect spot. Deep shots come easy to him, and he's never hesitant to throw them. It's another play action and link up to Collins with him getting soloed in the Broncos' quarters coverage. Stroud spots he's got a step, throwing another beauty for his man to run under. And this one's a risky one, but it shows off the ridiculous arm strength and his trust in his playmakers. Tang Dell is going to be put in motion to generate speed for his go-route. But with the long third down, the Jags are just backing up and leaving the Texans no options. With pressure starting to present itself inside, Stroud starts to drift left and getting his eyes deep, spots that his speedster has a chance. CJ is winding up from his own five and throws an absolute bomb to tank. It's slightly behind, but a great adjustment has him catching this on the Jags 29. That's 66 yards plus the angle while falling to his left. Ridiculous. It's not all just drilling guys and launching downfield though. Stroud regularly displayed soft touch, understanding the amount of air to put under the ball when the pass called for it. The Texans are going to fake the stretch left and boot out right, but add a twist in shot territory. Instead of Dalton Schultz just running a clear out or hooking to the boundary to work as a deep layer of the flood concept, he runs a corner post, fooling the defense and getting clean in behind. With the safety taking the over, standard procedure is for the corner to drop and replace him. But he notices late, and Stroud throws up a beautiful rainbow, leading Schultz to the end zone for six. And here it is to the boundary. He's got another one of these deep outs to hit, but with the defender hanging underneath, needs to throw with the requisite touch to locate the window. The ball's once again thrown before the cut, anticipating and dropping into the perfect spot for his receiver. Viewed mostly as a pocket passer, Plenty missed the improv plays he flashed in college, largely due to him being so good at playing and schedule. But it flashed in the pros too, extending and operating through chaos. Stroud starts by looking topside here against the Jags, but it's outnumbered. And by the time he gets near side, Collins is no longer open. So Stroud keeps the play alive to punish the Jags, only sending three. He's gonna stand tall and scan and start going right before hitting a 180 and working back left, keeping his eyes upfield the whole time, eventually finding a curled up Tank Dell sitting at the front of the end zone. And here with the Colts cover one robber swallowing everything shut, Stroud looks like he's gonna spin out left and try to break the play with his legs, but uses a spin to reset himself in the pocket and try to extend the play to get a receiver open. This, however, has let the ends get past their man and created pressure. But somehow, CJ spots Collins break back to the boundary and just throws one up to the space for him to run under. Some say he was throwing this away. We choose to add to his legend. And here against the Jags once more, they send the blitz, forcing Stroud to escape the commotion in his vicinity. But he's never flustered and his eyes never drop. He spots Tank Dell come free across the middle and trusts his man to make a play. This is a hell of a risky pass, and we'll talk about risk taking in a moment, but there's a reason Stroud backs this man. When there really is nothing there, Stroud's more than mobile enough to take what's given to him and run into empty space. And he even appears to have gotten better at protecting his body in the second half of the season. Although this still isn't perfect. As incredible as Stroud's rookie season was to witness, 
there's still some things he can improve on going into year two. Stroud's footwork could get a little lost on the move, and it affected his accuracy in boot action scenarios and under pressure. He could get caught rushing a throw and leaving it at his receiver's feet or back hip. And NFL DBs are simply too good to be given even a slither of a chance. To compensate for the pressure and to create space, Stroud would often try to throw these off his back foot. And while this might work for James Harden, it just leads to overthrows for CJ. With ultra aggression comes risky plays, and Stroud got away with plenty that a different roll of the dice might have punished him for. Most playmakers never want to let the play die, especially at a young age, and Stroud just attempted too many risky balls that should have seen him throw more picks. As games get closer and more difficult in January, the turnover differential becomes ever more critical and he's got to learn when to just live for another down. Pairing placement with poise, CJ Stroud's rookie season wasn't just a step in the right direction, but an unequivocal success. From a pure pocket play perspective, this is the best rookie season we've seen since Andrew Luck. And all these clips are from the second half of the year, and we were able to make two full videos showing his play this year. That's a damn impressive player. And there's still plenty more to come. The Texans continue to fill out the roster for Stroud, trading for Stefan Diggs, extending soon-to-be superstar Nico Collins, getting Joe Mixon in free agency, and gaining depth pieces in Ben Skoranek and Cade Stover, CJ's security blanket at Ohio State. Add to that rookie wonder Tank Dell, and wow does it feel like this offense is ready to explode. Can't wait to see what the future brings for this star in the making.